Hello and welcome to this overview of the Reading Improvement Plan resource. My name is Jan Sellers and I serve as an MTSS and Early Literacy Program Consultant in the Office of Teaching and Learning. Before we get started, please make sure you have access to the Reading Improvement Plan template and a copy of the participant handout to capture your thinking. These are both hyperlinked on the slide. The learning goal for this session is to familiarize you with the components of the Reading Improvement Plan resource developed by the Division of Early Literacy. By the end of the session, you'll understand how to use the Reading Improvement Plan template to meet the requirements of KRS 158305. You'll understand the role of database decision making in the development and monitoring of the Reading Improvement Plan. As part of the Read to Succeed Act, beginning in the 2023-24 school year, schools are required by regulation to develop and implement a reading improvement plan for any student K-3 identified as needing accelerated intervention to progress toward proficiency in reading. In response to questions from district and school leaders and to assist them in effectively developing and implementing reading improvement plans, the Kentucky Department of Education developed a template as an example that incorporates the requirements of KRS 158305. Let's take a look at some of the key features required by legislation. The reading improvement plan is to be developed and monitored by a reading improvement team. It's designed to accelerate proficiency in reading by the use of evidence-based reading instruction and intervention. The plan should include intensive instructional services that will be provided, progress monitoring measures and supports, and written quarterly progress reports to parents. The plan should also be developed in collaboration and accordance with any existing program services plan, individualized education program, or Section 504 plan unless those already address improving reading. An important requirement of the Reading Improvement Plan is that it is created and monitored by the Reading Improvement Team. The membership of this team is defined in statute and must include a parent or guardian of the student, general education teachers of the student, a representative of the local education agency who's knowledgeable about the literacy curriculum and evidence-based literacy resources of the school, and any specialized certified staff of students receiving language instruction education programming or special education services. When determining this team, schools should look at their current teaming structures to see if an existing team might function as the reading improvement team. For example, schools might utilize their existing MTSS student intervention team if these key members are represented. In this way, the school brings coherence and alignment among the various initiatives prioritized for school improvement. Pause the video for a few seconds and take a moment to consider what teams currently exist in your school that analyze student data and develop and monitor student intervention plans. Who might need to be added to a team to meet the requirements of the reading improvement team? And what training might be needed? Space is provided on page one of the participant handout for you to jot down possible next steps for implementation. The reading improvement plan template is designed to be developed within the context of team database decision making. Data will drive each step in the decision-making process. So let's take a look at the individual components of the plan. Section one of the template provides space to record identifying information about the student. Team members present. Areas where the student is at or above benchmark in reading. And any areas at risk for not meeting reading proficiency. The data used to determine the student's strengths and weaknesses come from the universal screening and diagnostic assessment tools. Section two is where the team creates the individual plan using database decision making. Let's take a closer look at each step in the development process. The development of the reading improvement plan starts with a critical first step of defining the problem using data. Teams use data to identify 
the target area of concern, and underlying root causes. This first step will drive the rest of the problem solving process. It begins with a high level look at the universal screening data. Student scores from a valid and reliable universal screener are compared to grade level benchmarks. What do we see in the data? What discrepancy exists between the student's current performance and the expected performance? These data are used to determine if the student is potentially at risk for not achieving proficiency in reading. Next, it's essential to dig deeper into the data for possible root causes. Why is the discrepancy occurring? The team determines the target area of concern by analyzing results from the valid and reliable diagnostic assessments. From this data, they can develop the problem statement. The team records the data used to identify the problem and root cause. The name of the assessment, dates administered, and scores will all go here. Data used to determine the target area of concern start with the universal screening, which is defined in statute as a process of providing brief assessment to all students within a grade level to assess the student's performance on the essential components of reading. The universal screening is like a well child checkup, a blood pressure check, or a temperature check. The data give us information about the health of the school, grade, class, and individual students. Scores on the universal screener are typically reported as benchmark or cut scores. These are developed through research to identify what score a student needs to earn in the fall or winter to have a strong likelihood of meeting grade level proficiency in spring of the same year. These scores are typically assigned a risk level based on research conducted by the test developer. For example, low risk. The student is likely to meet end of the year grade level benchmarks. Some risk. It's predictive of current or later learning difficulty without some change to instruction. High risk. The student is unlikely to meet end of the year benchmark without immediate intensive instructional support. It's important to note that universal screening data is simply used as an indicator of students at risk for not meeting proficiency, but it's not used in isolation. The use of valid and reliable diagnostic assessment provide information to help identify the root cause. The reading diagnostic assessment provide information about the student's skills and the essential components of reading. They are used to identify students that require intervention to accelerate progress toward proficiency in reading. By using data from valid and reliable diagnostic tools, the team can identify strengths and challenges in early literacy skills. Reading diagnostic assessments are not administered to all students they are administered to those potentially at risk for not meeting proficiency. Scores are typically criterion referenced. Students are compared to a fixed set of criteria or normed reference where they're compared to similar peers. Pause the video and consider what team members need to know to be able to use this data to identify the target area for intervention. There's space provided on page two of the participant handout for you to jot down possible next steps for implementation. Once the target area of concern has been identified, the team will need to set a clear goal with criteria and timeline for success. Depending on the target area, the team will identify the goal or benchmark the student will be expected to meet to be considered proficient in reading. When will it no longer be a problem? The team may select a middle or end of year benchmark for a general reading outcome or a specific skill based on data from the diagnostic assessment or the identified progress monitoring tool. The next step in the problem solving process is to select an intervention that aligns with the target areas of concern and develop the plan for how the intervention will be implemented. 
The intervention selected must be supported by the evidence of positive and statistically significant effects on student outcomes. It should be aligned with the area or areas targeted for improvement. The intervention plan will conclude the name and brief description of the intervention, the name of the interventionist, the frequency and duration, and the intervention group size. The final step is to determine how the intervention will be monitored for effectiveness and fidelity of implementation. The monitoring component of the plan is where the team determines how they will know if the intervention is having the desired impact on the student's reading proficiency. It's important for the team to consider what tools will be used to progress monitor. Curriculum-based measures are often used because they are short, skill-based assessments that are sensitive to change. They offer a snapshot of student learning and they measure growth over a set period of time. Key considerations in selecting a progress monitoring tool include asking if there's a sufficient number of alternate forms. Does it specify minimum acceptable growth? Do they provide benchmarks? Do they possess validity and reliability for the performance score? In addition to monitoring the student's response to the intervention, the team determines what fidelity data will be collected. How will they know that the intervention was implemented as designed? Data can be obtained by using checklists reflecting the critical components of the intervention, observations of the intervention being implemented, or attendance records. This section provides a spot for the team to summarize the implementation information. When the intervention will start, the duration of the intervention, the frequency of the intervention, and the frequency of progress monitoring. As the intensity of the intervention increases, so will the frequency of the progress monitoring. Best practice is for tier, at tier two is every two weeks, but a minimum of monthly and weekly for tier three. However, frequency of progress monitoring must be balanced with the team's goal of not wasting instructional time with an intervention that is not working. So for students with the most intensive needs, weekly data collection is encouraged to the extent possible. After the plan is implemented, the reading improvement team will schedule a date to meet back and review the student's response to the intervention. Typically, once six to eight data points are collected and graphed, the team would have enough information to meet to determine if the intervention is working, can be faded or discontinued, if more time is needed with the intervention, or if an instructional change is needed. This is a continuous cycle of review until the student has achieved proficiency in reading and exited the intervention. This section of the plan provides guided questions for the team as they use the database problem solving process to determine if their plan is working. If the student is on track to meet their goal, the intervention would continue as designed and the team would meet back to reevaluate the student progress after another six to eight data points until the goal is met. If the data is highly variable, the team will need to consider factors that might impl impact implementation integrity. If the, implement if the intervention was implemented as intended, the team may consider increasing the intensity and meeting back after four data points to assess impact. If the student is demonstrating a poor response to the intervention, the team will need to consider the fidelity and fit of the intervention and make an instructional change. During the plan review, the team analyzes the student data, ideally graphed with a goal line and a trend line, and reviews fidelity data to answer the questions. Did the intervention work? Was the intervention implemented as designed? Was the intervention aligned to the underlying root cause? And consider what instructional changes might need to be made. 
This might include keeping the intervention, but making a change in intensity, duration, group size, or even in delivery. Or it might be considering a different inter might mean considering a different intervention. Many vendor published process monitoring assessments will generate reports with graphs. And if those are not available, it's possible to add a goal line and a trend line using an Excel spreadsheet or Google Sheets. If an instructional change is made, the team will need to make the needed revisions to the plan. And the instructional changes are noted on the graph as the additional data is collected. The team would meet back after another six to eight data points to review progress using the same process and guiding questions outlined in Section 3. Section 4 provides space to document parent participation. Parents are required, are a required member of the reading improvement team, so there is space to record whether they were in attendance or how they were involved if they were unable to attend. There's also space to record who will be responsible for providing the written quarterly progress to the parent, the method used, and the dates provided. These resources provide some more in-depth information to assist teams understanding and implementing the key components of progress monitoring. There are more general resources available on the Division of Early Literacy pages on the KDE website and on the KYMTSS.org site. Thank you for your time. Please reach out if you have any questions around using the Reading Improvement Plan resource.